Well, the news is really popping today with regard to Tesla. And uh, we have so much to talk about. So let me let me start out here that Tesla has announced that they, uh, what did I just do here? <laughs> I've said, it's easy for me to read my own writing. Tesla has announced that they've done 100 million 4680 cells so far since the beginning of making 4680 cells. And this is about 50 million more than the 50 million milestone that they hit on June 5th. So the math is pretty easy. In 100 days, they produced 50 million or 500,000 per day. Well, based on the news today that Tesla hit that 100 million cells, what would that mean in terms of gigawatts per year at this particular run rate? I asked this of Grok. He says to calculate the gigawatt hours per year based on Tesla's production of the 100, the 100 million 4680 cells, we need to make some assumptions. Cell capacity. The 4680 cell is reported to have an energy capacity of approximately 100 watt watt hours per cell. This figure might vary slightly based on improvements or specific configurations, but we'll use 100 watts. Two, production milestone. Tesla reached the 100 millionth cell sometime around September 14th. If we consider this at a run rate over a year, we need to annualize the production. So he says, if you annualize the production from the information provided, Tesla produced 50 million cells in roughly three months from June to September. This implies an average production rate of 16.67 16 million cells per month. Over a year, this would be approximately 200 million cells, 16.67 million times 12 months. Number four, energy production calculation. If each of the cells has 100 watt our capacity, then that would equal to 200 million cells over a year, which would equal, uh, if you divide that by 100, you get to 20, or multiply times 100, you get to 20 billion. Um, and converting that to gigawatts instead of watt hours, you divide by a billion, and that gives you uh, 20 gigawatt hours. There you go. So good job on the part of uh, of Grok here. And then uh, the limiting factor, he responded and said that Grok got it right. He was very impressed with the work that he'd done. Said he might've been 5% off possibly uh, in that, in his calculation. So this would mean that Tesla's production uh, is approximately in three months, if he did three months, uh, tra translates to an annual production of 20 gigawatts per year. Now then, that's why uh, they just he just went on and on. Grok just, you know, Grok definitely likes to talk a lot. So um, I don't know if this will hit Wall Street on Monday, but this is a massive milestone. It's been on the top of my list of what I consider to be very big catalyst is to hit that 20% level. And uh and that and, and this means that they would only need four more similar improvements. So if you get you have twenty percent now, uh, fifty percent uh, 50 improvement on that over the next three months would get us to thirty, et cetera, et cetera. You do that four times, you're to one hundred percent or hundred gigawatt hours per year. And my guess is that it won't take ninety days to keep on doing these fifty percent improvements because once you've got the thing rolling, I think it'll start rolling a little faster, in particular, since I think what we're talking about now is adding more lines. They've got successful lines going, so now you just have to add more lines doing the same thing. So this could be pretty fast. And Elon has said uh, that he thought they would be pretty close to the full 100 gigawatt capacity by gigawatt hour capacity by the end of the year. Now, here's the massive benefits that will come out of this. Number one, that will lower the cost for cyber trucks or other vehicles using 4680s. That's huge. And that would be way more than enough at 100 gigawatt hours. Believe me, that's enough to make all the cyber trucks you need to make for, you know, based on what we're anticipating in production right now. Number two, huge money coming from the IRA because every one of those cells, uh, you know, that you're talking about uh, uh, $35 per uh, watt hour, I think it is, uh, and that, and then another ten ten dollars for each uh, watt hour that goes into us into a pack. So it's forty five dollars per, I think, watt hour. Don't get me. Uh, there's, I could be confused on this, but I know that I think it turns out to be. I want to say it's four point five billion dollars for that hundred gigawatt hours, and it also would mean that Tesla would be one of the biggest 
manufacturers of cells in the world at that point, maybe second only to uh, CATL. Um, that would also be number three. That's, so that's number one, lower the cost of Cybertruck. Number two, big money coming from IRA. Can't be 4.5 billion, can it? I'd have to go back and do those numbers. And then number three, a proof of concept to start work at Sparks and Berlin, where they're anticipating 500 gigawatt hours at Sparks, another 100 gigawatt hours at Austin after the first 100 is finished, and then another 100 gigawatt hours over in Berlin, and potentially maybe in Shanghai as well. And then number four, that would be another massive Tesla and Elon win, just putting more stripes on the uh, shoulder. Is that right? Anyway, giving them more kudos. <laughs> anyway, this is a bottom line victory on multiple level levels. Therefore, it should move the stock, but it probably won't. Or if it does, maybe it'll be five bucks. We'll see what happens on Monday. But then in addition to that, we got this from Holmar's catalog. Now, you know, he's, enthousi he's enthusiastic. He's a, he's a, a guy like me, very optimistic. He says, wow, really nice first drive on Tesla FSD 12.5.2.1 for hardware three. So this is a, the next iteration. We saw that 12.5.2 was a little shaky. Now there is a 12.5.2.1. And he said he had zero interventions. He recorded it. You can go watch it on X. Tesla seems to have succeeded in getting the hardware four model to run on the full size HW3. He, he doesn't know that for sure. He's, he's, he's thinking maybe that's what happened. He says they now seem to be performing identically. Could be, and that would be another huge deal. Anyway, this is Randy Kirk. If you haven't hit the, uh, the famous like button or subscribe button or all that jazz, uh, we'll have, uh, of course, programming tomorrow. I've already got the morning program started. I think it's going to be a big fun one. And uh, then we've already, and then tomorrow night, of course, we have Monday morning, which appears on Sunday night to tell you all about the stuff that's going to happen in the markets and with Tesla in the following week. This, oh, by the way, I also had uh, Doji, D-O-J-I, Doji or Doji 1, just became a Patreon member after this morning. I mentioned that we were having a drought a horrible drought here in California. Hadn't had a single person join in like two weeks. And Doji One says, I'll break the drought. I'll, I'll, I'll break through. So maybe that'll start a new trend. How about you? That'd be fantastic. From the Kobesi letter, he says, breaking, listen to this now, the restaurant performance index fell 1.3% in July to 97.7 points. That's the lowest level since the 2020 lockdowns. The index tracks the health of the restaurant industry in the U.S. by measuring sales, customer traffic, labor, and overall business conditions. Since 2021, this metric has fallen by 8%, marking the largest drop since it was launched in 2002. Such a low level in the index has only been seen during recessions. Americans are pulling back on dining out as prices have been sharply rising and recently hit new all-time highs. I'm telling you, it's crazy. It's crazy crazy what you pay in the restaurants. I'm sure you'll let me know in the comments below if you agree. Since 2020, food prices away from home have increased by 27% and fast food has jumped by 31%. Eating out is now officially a luxury, Kobesi said. All right. And then this story, you want to stay for this story. This is really super interesting on so many levels. Oracle, as I reported the other day, has plans to build the largest data center in the known universe, larger even than Tesla, larger than X, larger than anybody else. And he's, this is an update from Oracle about their plans. Um, and, fr and from this article that was, ooh, I didn't write down where the article came from. I'm so sorry. Anyway, tech giant Oracle gave a big vote of confidence to nuclear power this week. This is part of the reason this is so interesting. Sending stocks in the industry higher while sim simultaneously baffling experts who aren't sure how the company, how their plans are even possible. Oracle founder Larry Elson told investors on earnings call Monday that the company is designing one of the largest data centers in, in existence, a behemoth, 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 a facility that could, I know the word, but I don't know how to pronounce it, <laughs> that could consume more power than 300,000 homes. He also said Oracle plans to use nuclear reactors to power the facility and is already working with a company that has building permits to build three small reactors. The news excited people in the nuclear industry, 
even if it was short on detail, details, including where the facility will, will go, when it might be complete, and who else is involved. Rodney Rabello, an analyst at Reeves Asset Management, who covers nuclear energy, I need to get him on the show, said in a vote of confidence in nuclear, uh, said it was a vote of confidence in nuclear that comes as a real surprise. He says, I see it as a material positive for the validation of new, new, new nuclear at hyperscale data centers, potentially, re, the, potentially having a role in advancing these small nuclear facilities. Oracle stock jumped after its earnings were released and then AI stocks also soared. Small reactor developer NewScale was up 40% this week, even though there's no evidence it was involved in the Oracle deal. And the Range Nuclear Renaissance Index ETF was up 6% this week. Now, the market was up a lot. Oracle says it's already building an artificial intelligence data center that will need power capacity of 800 megawatts, more than 10 times as much as most existing data centers. The nuclear power one would be over one gigawatt. Data centers could consume as much as 9% of total U.S. power demand by 2030, almost double the current amount, which is around 5%, according to the Electrical Power Research Institute. Nuclear power makes up 19% of U.S. electricity right now, and it's the largest source of carbon-free power in the U.S., but it's been stagnant for decades. Only three new reactors have been built in the U.S. in the last 28 years. Now, one of those just went online like two months ago. Nuclear makes sense for tech companies because it's the most efficient power source, source available, operating at capacity factors above 90% versus less than 60% for most natural gas and 40% for coal. And nobody's going to build a new coal reactor, a coal facility of any kind, meaning nuclear is producing maximum power nearly all the time. It is also cleaner than most other sources and can run 24-7. It's an important factor for tech companies that have vowed to reduce their carbon footprint. And of course, it's a competitor to a solar and, and a battery, which is one of the reasons I'm bringing it up here. Tech companies have also, they have the cash to help finance nuclear reactors, which can cost $10 billion or more each. Now, these mini nukes are not, or these uh, modular style nukes are not going to be $10 billion each. Utilities have been hesitant to plan new reactors because they have a history of costing more than their initial projections and take much longer to build than other sources of generation. Again, these modular units are designed to be prefab or pre, you know, built in the factory along a, an exacting set of, of uh, uh, you know, manufacturing um, plans, not something that is designed and then built in place, et cetera, et cetera. This is going to be something that people can count on. So an Oracle nuclear partnership could be a match made in heaven for the industry. The problem is that nuclear experts are confused as to how it's even possible. Ellison himself prefaced the announcement by saying, let me say something that's going to sound really bizarre. He gave a few, de he gave few details about the data center. We are in the middle of designing a data center that's north of a gigawatt that has the location and the power place that we've located. They've already got building permits for three reactors. These are small modular nuclear reactors to power the data center. So he even mentioned small here. I should, I, so I started to say a minute ago and then I took it back, but these are not the middle size modular. These are small modular nuclear reactors. Oracle didn't respond to a request for more information. Most nuclear reactors in the U.S. are very large and are assembled on site based on specifications unique to the location. So-called small, small modular reactors are relatively new concept. They produce less power designed so that their parts can be built off-site. I just said all that. <laughs> I already knew all that. Anyway, Rabello of Reeves Asset Management noted that only one company in the U.S. has received approval for a small modular re reactor. That's Portland, Oregon-based NewScale. But NewScale, which declined to comment, hasn't received any building permits that he knows of. <laughs> NewScale hasn't built any reactors yet and had to back away from its first project last year after costs escalated and the co company couldn't sign up enough customers. Two small modular reactors have been built elsewhere in Russia and China, but nuclear experts doubt Oracle would rely on developers from those countries for this project. There are several other U.S. companies that are attempting to build small reactors, but none have received approval for their design jet from the National Re Regulatory Commission. Rebello thinks Ellison's unscripted comments may have inadvertently created confusion. The company may be building its data center at an existing nuclear plant that has room for more reactors, 
For instance, I don't think that's the case. Among the companies that he thinks could be involved are nuclear plant owners such as Constellation Energy, Duke, or Dominion, and nuclear designers such as New Scale or Westinghouse. Dominion said it isn't involved, and the others haven't responded to requests for comment. Seth Gray, chairman of the American Nuclear Society's International Council and CEO of nuclear tech company Lightbridge, said many nuclear companies are considering deals like the one Oracle announced. But as far as he knows, none of them are moving forward. Well, somebody is. From what I've heard, over, this is not me. This is the uh, this is the, the article still. Quote, from what I've heard over the last few days from small nuclear reactor, SMR, and advanced reactor developers, there is a lot of conversations with the tech companies haven't committed, he wrote in an email. Nonetheless, Gray sees Oracle's announcement as another validation for the industry. I think he says, I think Larry Ellison and others are realizing that they can only obtain the massive amounts of reliable power they need, especially if they will meet if they want to meet climate goals. And some of their investors are very interested in that. They're going to have to use nuclear as part of the generating mix or even as a sole source of power. Or they're going to use solar and battery. I think that's going to be a big part of it. But as every you know, people point out, the big problem with solar is the amount of ground that you use in order to accomplish it. But I will say the Biden administration just made a lot of federal land available for that purpose. My guess is that they would be able to lease that those ground that, that ground at very low rates in order to accomplish these kinds of purposes. Okay, that is all I have for you right now. Please like, subscribe, notify, join Patreon, keep the ball rolling here. Just one more would be great for tomorrow and then one for the next day and one for the next day. Anyway, it has uh, been great talking to you.